Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good one today. I'm Nick and today I'm going to be dropping my top 10 movies of 2021. I've already did die top 5 disappointments of the year and I've done my top 5 horror movies of the year. You can go check those out. They're on my channel right now. Let's get into the top 10 of the year. But first, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content, and you can follow me on my social medias. They'll all be down in the description, guys. Go check them out. Now, let's start off with some honorable mentions. The first honorable mention I'll talk about is Nobody, the Bob Odenkirk action flick. Much like in the style of John Wick, but it had a little bit more humor here and there, and the action scenes were phenomenal. We got Boss Level, which is a really cool action flick in the vein of Groundhog Day, where the days just keep repeating and he has to figure out how to get out of it. Uh, we got PG Psycho Gorman, a really bizarre, bonkers horror comedy that you definitely should check out. We got Wrong Turn, the reboot. Um, this is my favorite of the franchise. It was a real f breath of fresh air for it because... Uh, I was really fed up of those cannibalistic hillbillies and I'm glad they took it in a new direction with the foundation. And lastly we got The Last Duel with Matt Damon. This movie had phenomenal performances and I'm not usually into this like almost medieval type movies but this one just really worked. Might have been because it was based on a true story and we got to see three different perspectives of what happened which was really unique and neat. But uh, yeah, just missed my top 10. Now getting into my top 10, at number 10 we got Fear Street 1978. Now this is a great little camp slasher in the vein of like Sleepaway Camp or Friday the 13th, which is really cool since I'm a huge fan of those. Um, we had lots of gore, some cool kills. I think the characters were a step up from the 1994 film. And everything just really seemed to work for me, especially the setting. And when I finished this flick, I just could not wait to check out part 3, uh, 1666, which is my number 9, Fear Street 1666. Now this one, I think, has the best performances out of all three films. And I believe that's because this was like a period piece back in the Pilgrim times. And that really hauls a lot out of your actors, having to do the different types of dialogue, like the old school dialogue and just the dressing up and everything the setting was really cool i'm a sucker for origin story so learning more about the witch and the curse and how it all happened and begun was really cool to me and i just think that this wrapped up the whole franchise in a really neat way coming in at number eight we got red notice now this was a surprise for me i did not think this was going to make my top 10 but we got a stellar cast that really elevated everything about this film we got Ryan Reynolds, The Rock, we got Gal Gadot, which is smoking hot by the way. Uh, and those three, they just work perfectly off each other. The chemistry is amazing. Uh, there was a lot of laughs, a few twists and turns I didn't see coming throughout. And it was just a really fun ride throughout. Coming in at number seven, we got Free Guy, another Ryan Reynolds flick. This guy, he does so much great content. And this is no exception. I love the story of this one, how we're like inside a video game. And Ryan Reynolds plays this computer character called Guy. And he figures out that what's going on and he wants to be free. He wants to live his own life and do his own stuff and not do the same things over and over like the rest of these computers. And it was just such a unique premise. Had a great, great cast, obviously, with Ryan Reynolds. It was funny. It was fun. Heartwarming at times. My only small complaint would be that the main villain, like the, the boss of the company who's running the game, he was a little over the top. It's played by uh, Watiki. Uh, I feel like he was just a little overdone. He could have brought it down just a tiny bit. But besides that, this is an amazing flick. At number six, we got The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Now, this may be the only animated film I've watched this year, come to think about it. So, it's definitely the best one of 2021 that I've seen. And yeah, it was really clever story writing. Uh, I like all the voice actors. There was a lot of references in that to older movies and that. So film buffs like me had a, a lot of Easter eggs to pick out of this one. I thought it was fun. It was funny. Especially the two robot characters that and were bad that turned good. They're, they're just hilarious. And they cracked me out throughout the whole film. And yeah, it was just a really good 
animated film for the whole family. At number five, we got The Night House. Such an underrated horror flick from this year. More people have to see this. It's gripping with tension, atmosphere. It's creepy as hell. But above all that, it's got a great story, a great cast, and some twists and turns all throughout. There's a real strong mystery throughout that really just kept me locked into the runtime of this one. And the way it wrapped up, I was like, wow, that was such a nice way to end it. And it's one of those films I had to go and research after watching it just to make sure that I got the right like ending and got what the whole movie was trying to say. And those type of movies are always nice when you go and you talk to people, just compare notes and that just to make sure we are all on the same page. And fortunately enough, I did get the movie, but it was still very clever and great visuals as well. Speaking of great visuals, at number four, we got Malignant. Now, this was the most shocking out of nowhere twist of the whole year for me. <laughs> like, very bizarre, but it worked. It was like an homage to the 80s films. It was an homage to the Italian horror films with its visuals and use of red, the color red throughout. But overall, it was just a super fun ride. James Wan really outdid himself again and I can totally see this becoming a franchise just like he did with Insidious, The Conjuring, Saw. It seems like everything he touches becomes a franchise. Aquaman even is getting a part two. And this was just such a breath of fresh air and it's really such, like I said, a bonkers twist that I was like, it's kind of cheesy, it's kind of out there, but it's super original, especially for this day and age. We need more originality like this. At number three, we got Last Night in Soho. Now, this is the newest movie by Edgar Wright, and it is just brilliant. Whether we're talking about the visuals, the soundtrack, the acting is so good. Um, what's her name? Thomason McKenzie? I think she gave the best female performance of the entire year. And uh, her like her side character, I should say, uh, played by uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, which I've seen in a few other things like The Witch. She is almost just as good. These two are amazing actresses, and it really shows in this film. And it's such a unique blend of like crime, drama, coming of age, and then halfway through it shoots the horror at you. And it's just a thrill ride right to the end, and there's the, the twists work for me. The visuals are so stunning, whether we're talking about when she's walking by mirrors and she sees the reflection of the other actress, or her visions of the past meeting with the, with the future, essentially. And everything about this film is just great. I can't praise it enough. It may not be my favorite, favorite Edgar Wright film, but the man just hasn't made anything bad in my opinion. Coming in at number two, we got Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, this is the movie that's going to be on most people's top 10 lists that are into this type of movies. Um, probably number one on most people's list. Not mine, but it was a very friggin' awesome trip. Like, especially if you have the nostalgia of the older Spider-Man movies, bringing back all those villains and everything. It was just such a treat. Um, man, the best Spider-Man MCU film for sure. And I just can't wait to see what's next with like Doctor Strange 2 and the Multiverse of Madness or whatever it's called because they really set things up in this film to make me like wow I can't wait to see what's coming next. I don't want to talk too much about it because it's fairly new it's still in theaters I don't want to spoil it for anybody but definitely go see it guys it's it's one of the best films of the year and I just wasn't expecting that uh, amount of emotion to come out of me while watching it like they really tug on your heartstrings in this one which I did not see coming. But it's also funny. It's also entertaining. It really is a jack of all trades. But coming in the first place for my favorite movie of the year at my number one spot is The Suicide Squad. DC gave James Gunn full control with this film and I absolutely love it. It's so nice to see because so many studios screw around with the director's films. Especially nowadays, it seems to happen more than ever. So it was so nice to see him just do what he wanted to do. Even though there's maybe 2% of this film that I like, he went a little too far there. But for the most part, I'm completely in love. 
It's gory. It's it's everything I want from a comic book film. It does not hold back on its humor, its violence. Everything works for me. Uh, Idris Elba, the main guy, like he, my one of my favorite actors now, and he gives a solid, solid performance where some of the other characters are like cheesy or but they're written that way, right? Where he. I like to see a film just of him after watching this, which means a lot when you got like 17 villains in this film. So he really stood out to me. But also, like Peacekeeper, all the rest, they're all awesome. Like, they're even making a TV show of Peacekeeper, so you know they did something right. And overall, guys, this is just the film that I had the most fun with watching. I rewatched it the most. I just. I'm just in love with the Suicide Squad, and it completely blows the last Suicide Squad out of the water. And for a film to make you feel for Stallone playing a shark that can barely talk, just go nom nom half the time, like that's something. Like, he gave that character emotional pull, which my mind's still blown away by that, and it works. Uh, same as Rat Catcher number two and all, all their intertwined stories. They're really heartfelt and you don't expect it from this ultra violent comedy like this. So there you have it guys. There's my top 10 of the year. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down below what's your favorite movies of this year. I'm really interested in hearing them, especially if I didn't watch them. I would have to add it to my watch list. And uh, stay tuned for my live event where I'll be ranking all 48 films I have watched from this year. From worst to best, that's going to be probably a long one, but we'll, we'll try our best to get through it. And that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching.